Again, I appreciate uh, everyone's attendance for this Wednesday night uh, class. As I had stated during my uh, lesson, um, this, this heat and all the work I had to do has affected my voice and I can barely talk. But, uh, you know, most people don't like to hear my voice anyway, so you just have to bear with it. <laughs> But I have sent out uh, some uh, uh, slides, and the one that we are on tonight is the one that's entitled Immediate uh, Inferences. So you might want to uh, refer to that slide, and we'll deal with that. Before we start, though, let's have a, a short word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray that they will be with us in our study, that we may gain the most out of it. We pray for diligence in our studies, that through constant uh, uh, diligence, we may become more knowledgeable of that word. We do not say that we must be like a Paul, but we have Paul's word, so we should at least be uh, familiar with what he has to say. And we have the great advantage of having the entire Bible with us to guide us that we may know thy will for us and that we may hide it in our hearts and not sin. So we're thankful for that and we pray that be with us as we engage in this study. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So looking at this, uh, of course, it's been two weeks, and you may have forgotten all that we uh, actually studied. I guess I need to share that screen. So let me make this screen a little larger. So hopefully you can read that now. So. Based on the previous lessons, uh, you know, the, the purpose of it, uh, you know, allows us to determine the validity of the standard form categorical syllogism. In some of the later lessons, we'll find out that at least what some philosophers have said that formal logic study is not to be able to construct a syllogism, but is to recognize when a syllogism is false. However, most arguments in daily life, and, and keep in mind, we are we always use logic. There's not a day that goes by we don't use logic. It, we may not put it in the formal uh, syllogistic form, but we're using logic. So uh, most of the things, when, it, when I say arguments, I'm not talking about you getting in, in a fuss with somebody. I was talking about that you uh, having a problem with my uh, get tangled up in my cord. You're not you're not having a fuss. You're really discussing something, and you're setting forth. Uh, um, well, just arguments, things that support what you're uh, asserting, and somebody else may put up some other things that they're asserting. And uh, for it to be practical, it's got to be a, a uh, valid argument. <clears throat> it can't be just a verbal dispute. But we do this in normal English all the time. We don't put it in <clears throat> formal, uh, standard form of categorical syllogism. We, we just talk normal English. So in order to make the skills hopefully uh, here to learn more practical, <clears throat> we'll consider how to translate argument in normal English into standard syllogism. You might try this sometime. You let think about it, <clears throat> but take some sort of argument that you've had or that you can think of and try to put it into standard uh, syllogism. 
So we're going to first look at the translation from the immediate inferences. <coughs> Excuse me. An immediate inference is a statement that can be inferred directly from another statement. So one statement infers another statement. It resembles a syllogism, you know, a major premise, minor premise, premise and a conclusion, but with only one premise and is related to the concepts of implication and equivalence. And we, we studied that before. For example, from the square of opposition, and you recall what that is. We know that some S is P can be immediately, immediately inferred from all S is P by sub implication. We also know uh, by our study on logical uh, equipment, we know and learn by our study on logical equivalence that the following statements can be immediately, immediately inferred from each other. No S is P, so we can infer that no P is S. And if we state that some S is P, then we can infer some P is S. It's, it's a logical inference. <clears throat> the immediate inference that switches the subject and predicate of a statement is called the converse. Converse is only valid for E. You remember the, the four corners, A, E, I, and O. A is all S is B, and directly across the top is uh, no S is B. <clears throat> So the converse is only valid for E and I. No S is P is E and the I form is some S is P, which is directly below on the, the left-hand side of the square at the bottom. <clears throat> A uh, statement that is all S is P, the upper left-hand corner, and O, some S is not P, that's the lower right hand corner. So A and O statements do not have a valid converse. All S is P does not imply that all P is S. <clears throat> We're saying that all the S is P, but there could be some P that's not an S. Could be P could have some uh, D F D G whatever. Could have something else in it. We're just saying all S is P. So it didn't imply does that imply that all P is S? If it did, then the fact that uh, all women are people would imply that all people are women. When we can see that it can't be the case. <clears throat> We wouldn't even go so far to say that all people can't be women. Similarly, if some dogs are not poo poodles, <clears throat> and that's the O uh, form. Some dogs are not poodles is the O statement. Does not mean that some poodles are not dogs. <clears throat> but they are the breeds. And we know that uh, some poodles are not dogs. We know that all poodles are dogs. So it, it can't mean that some poodles are not dogs. Another type of immediate inference is the obverse. The obverse of the statement is obtained by changing the quality of the statement. All changes over to a no, and some changes over to some not, and vice versa, and go either way. 
in changing the predicate to its complement, P to non-P. Each of the four categorical statements has a valid, a valid obverse. They are translated as follows. All S is P. Now keep in mind that P could be much, much larger than the S. And the S is just part of the P. All S to P equals no S is not non-P. Well, if all S is P, every last single S is a P, then there's not an S that's not a P. But it doesn't mean that all P's are S's. So all believers are Christians is equivalent. No believers are non-Christians. That is no S is P and all S is non-P. So that's the obverse, not the converse, the obverse. The snow demons are atheists means the same thing as all demons are non-atheists. So some S is P and some S is not, is not non-P. So some incredible things are possible implies that some incredible things are not impossible. It's just the obverse. And finally, some S is not P equals some S is non-P. And that, that's, of course, more obvious. Some Americans are not capitalist is equivalent that some Americans are non-capitalist. <clears throat> I'm not going to say anything like they can be Democrats, wouldn't say that. The third type of immediate inference is the contrapositive. The contrapositive switches the subject and the predicate of A. All S is P. You know, some S is not P. It switches the uh, subject and predicate uh, of A statements, as in the converse statements, but it changes both subject and predicate of each to their complements. <clears throat> this can be derived from the other two immediate inferences. Follow the Follow the uh, two translations as presented below. Uh, all S is P, and the obverse is some S is not P. And you go down to no S is non P, the same, the same thing as uh, all S is P. And the obverse of the some S is not P, and some S is non-P. <clears throat> it really just change, change the not to a non. So you go to the non, no non-P is S. And by a verse, you could say, and say you, you could say, uh, that's the, sort of like the uh, top one there. No S is non-P, no non-P is S. And over on the uh, right-hand side, some non-P is S. So it's, again, it's the uh, just changing some things around the one above that, but the non-P in front and make it the subject and the S becomes a predicate. <clears throat> and uh, the last one, all non-P is non-S. By obverse, we can say some non-P is not non-S. 
Thus, the uh, statement, all saved people are believers, is equivalent to all non believers are unsaved people. Similarly, uh, some faithful people are not uh, Buddhist, translates into his contrapositive. Some non Buddhist are not faithful people. Notice that the contrapositive is not valid for ye. No S is P and I. Some S is not P. Those statements, it doesn't work. And that can be proved by trying to put the either type of statement through the uh, translation procedure uh, set forth just right above. After the first obverse, a statement is obtained that has no valid converse. <clears throat> now consider the following argument. Is it uh, valid or invalid? All non-believers are unsaved people. No believers are non-Christians. Therefore, all Christians are saved people. As uh, written, this argument has six terms. Saved people, unsaved people, Christian, non-Christian, believers, and non-Christians. It also looks as it has, if it, as if it has a negative premise and an affirmative conclusion. In order to analyze it for validity, the number of terms needs to be reduced down to the standard three using the, the immediate inferences. The major premise is an A statement. All S is P. So we have to do that. Now we can take its contrapositive and change it into all saved people are believers. All saved people are believers. The minor premise can be changed into its obverse. All believers are Christians. Let's make it different. And then this whole argument becomes all saved people are believers. All saved people are believers. We just switch this uh, around. Instead of saying unsaved, we said saved. Instead of saying non-believers, we say believers. All, all saved people are believers. The minor premise can be changed into its obverse. All believers are Christians. Make this an all universal statement and get rid of the non. All believers are Christians. Then the whole argument becomes all saved people are believers, all Christians are believers. Therefore, all Christians are saved people. That stays the same. Now, this argument can be analyzed with the techniques already covered in our square of opposition and the mood and and so forth. This is a A A A dash four syllogism. And you need to go back and look up the, the moods one, two, three, and four. Yeah, let's do with the middle term. The A uh, types of syllogism arguments all are, all are, and all are, all safe people are. All Christians are, and all Christians are. So that's a triple A syllogism. And the four, the four has to be uh, has to do with the uh, 
what the middle term is. Here's the predicate, also the, the predicate here. And of course, the middle term does not appear in the conclusion. So that's that one. I think what I'm going to do, since it is very difficult for me to talk, is to conclude the lesson for tonight and uh, take up uh, next week translating ordinary statements. So you might want to review that before next week. So thank you for your uh, attendance. And again, I apologize for my voice.